Hello everyone, welcome to the episode of Community Influencers and thank you to everyone who's been watching our last few episodes of Community Influencers, uh, meet our team and also talking with experts. Obviously this is a new series and we had uh, a few team members actually come on board from different uh, ethnic backgrounds, from different communities and so on. So appreciate it and uh, for those who are liking it and sharing it, uh, spread the news. And today I have got Young Brooke. Uh, Young, you are from Vietnam. Yes, I'm from Vietnam. Now for those, uh, you know, once again, if you're from Vietnam or if you know you or know anyone or if you've been to Vietnam, start, uh, you know, commenting down the bottom and uh, we'll try and see. Uh, as we go through and discuss uh, what Young has been up to and where she's from, we'll hopefully get some more audiences to, to, to follow us. So Young, thank you very much for coming to the show um, as Community Influencers. Yeah, thank you Bob so much for having me today and this is great um, great opportunity for me to share and talk with everyone and share with Bob. Excellent. Today. Yeah. So thank you. You know, one of the things uh, as we were talking before this, uh, guys, um, I Young has got something that I really want to open up uh, and discuss today because she's she's come in with a level of energy that I haven't seen in in anyone before. So uh, <laughs> really good to um, uh, you know have you over here. Now we'll start off with. Um, you yourself now yes. where are you from i know you're from vietnam but yes. tell me a little bit about where you grew up and about yourself all right so i um i was born in vietnam and where i was born in dallas city is high up from vietnam so i uh, you know let's talk a little bit about my background yeah. that when i was young and i born and i just really lacking confident and really don't know what to do until i'm 16. here's the thing you know it's just so um i i can't describe that how i come and at that time i really really lacking confident don't know how to say and don't know how to communicate, how to communicate and how yes. to tell people all right okay. yes yeah. that's right yeah. But get into the today, I have a lot of questions people ask, how do I change from there to now? Yeah, okay, very good. So there's a bit of transformation, obviously, um, that happened in your life. Yes. Um, now, one of the questions um, I would say, in your situation, did you have any siblings? Uh, I any do brothers? have, yeah. yes, I have uh, um, two, one sister, one mm -hmm. old sister, one old brother, and two young brother. So you're kind of like in the middle. middle. Yes, now, I am in the middle. <laughs> so is it the middle child syndrome? Maybe. Yeah, that maybe. Happens, <laughs> but, no, no. Yeah. Um, but it'll be interesting to find out. Now, you said you were born in a mountain region of, uh, of Vietnam. Yes. So you obviously went to school around that town, that, that city. I shouldn't say town. Yes, it, it yes, the city. The city yeah. um, tell me, um, growing up as a, as a primary and high school student or kid, what are the, some of the things that you did uh, in Vietnam in the mountain regions? Right. So... Um, when I go to school, this is my true story that mm. I, I go to school that I, like I say, I'm lacking confident. I, I, at the school, I learn really good, mm -hmm. but I don't know to say, I don't know to talk and up. I leave school really early age. Year eight, yep. I already left school. Yep. And I'm not continuing to school because of my goals at that time, I want to be making money to help my parents because yep. in my culture that kid look after parents. So that's why I left school and not continue to go to school. And then I say, okay, what should I do to actually making money so my parents can retire earlier? I stop and then go to learn hairdressing. To start working. So, you know what, I think that's a pretty, um, you know, you're talking about generally the South Asian Asian culture. Yep. Uh, one of the thing is, you know, how do we support, as we grow older, our parents and our older or younger siblings, right? Younger yep. siblings, yeah. So I, it's not only on certain uh, cultures, it's, it's, you can see it, it goes into the South Asian culture, into Vietnam as yeah. well. So that's, that's great. And you, and you only went up to grade eight. So you were fairly young when you're thinking about yes. this on how to make money and support the family. Yes. Wow, wow. Yes. And being a female, 
a girl obviously yeah. that's 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 a bit of a challenge as well and you yes. mentioned a little bit about um you know having those those skills where you know you how do you actually open up and express yourself so from there you decided hairdressing why hairdressing okay so at that point you know i keep thinking how can i making money but the first thing that i decide to leave my parents house go to um the, the city to work and making money so how far is the city from uh your town? probably it 30 kilometers like one okay. hour so would you commute like did you would you stay in the city or do you go back and forwards every day uh stay in the city stay in yeah the city? i stay like so from a, a country yeah. girl you became yeah. a city girl yeah so the story in here that when i start to decide to leave the house leave my parents and my dad said it to me you are too young you even can't talk how you are going to making money oh my gosh i cried like three days four days and i asked him for five times to let me go to making money but he said no the fifth time that i asked my mom to support me to ask dad for me to go to to leave the house to making money and then actually he allowed me to go okay here's the thing when i actually leave my parents and i go to work and i cry 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 that for two months after that mm. do you know why no you don't. i don't know how to talk and it just make me feel that everyone they sit next together they talk and laugh and really good and i say you know what if you at that time you talk to me hey young hey what is your name i say my name is and i look out at the floor, don't eye contact. Right, so lacking confidence. Yes, yeah. really lacking confidence. Don't know how to talk. Mm. Really low self-esteem because I always thought everyone not like me. Completely different now. Yes, <laughs> that's right. But question, that's what make me change and why I go with hairdressing. Yep. The make me change that I say I cry every day for two months. And I think this is not right. I have to change. I cannot be cry every day and just think like that. Because with the feeling when you wake up every day, you feel that you don't believe in yourself. You don't have any energy because you just think about that and it just make you feel all day like really was. One day I say, I have to change. And when I start to think I have to change, I start to listen what actually people talk about. Yeah. Start to listen. And then this is the amazing action I do. I listen what people say and one day I really say, okay, where should I start? And I sit on the table like that when the, the break time. I sit on the table, on the table have the books. I open the book and I read through in the book and in the book it just remind me what people talk every day. It just look like the magazine yeah, in there. Okay. Yep. Then I start to, number one, I write some words from the book, I never know, write it down, practice it, mm -hmm. read the story in that book, like five steps, how to do makeup every day, whatever in that book, to make me think that that story, I can talk to people. Right. Make sense? So I you found you found information to talk about. Yes, 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 yes you are and right. And that gave you confidence because you knew yes. about that piece of whatever you've read. Yes. Good point. But here's the thing, I just have to write it down, practice about that, and keep thinking about that, talk about that. Yeah. Amazing. My life changed Change. from there. You know what? I think I'm going to pause you there. And um, for those people, I, you know you know it, what's coming. It's, it's, it's the golden nugget, a takeaway from, from, from our conversation. Now, a lot of people would say the same that you know bob you're always talking and you sometimes there's a there's a fine line between arrogant and confidence now i would say um and i've repeated that a couple of times that confidence comes from knowledge so i would not be talking about something that i'm not confident enough i would not be talking about it so that's a good point i mean in your case that actually gave you what you're knowledgeable about gave you confidence to talk and and open up to so if you're lacking that confidence, guys, you know what your strengths are, you know hobbies, you know the area that you're good at, whether it be in IT or software programming, uh, or whether it be dressmaking or hairdressing or law or whatever it may be. Talk about those, 
those are your strengths that you can actually talk comfortable with and that's where the confidence will come into play right yes and if people don't want to talk about it which means that gives you an ability to you know have a discussion about why so, yes so good good point yeah that is exactly about i just totally agree with you mm. confident start from knowledge from knowledge knowledge if you don't have knowledge and you i mean the knowledge is have different level mm. right when you have just the basic level yeah. it give you a little bit confident yeah. but when you get into that advanced that it you're just fully confident, confident with that and Here's the thing I see a lot of people feel and they just get overwhelmed. Mm. And they think, but how I can have that knowledge? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To me, that don't just think too much, just take one mini step each At a time. day. Each day. And something that you like and it's close to you, right? Yes, yeah. exactly right. Something that you enjoy. Now, um, we talked a little bit about obviously you're bringing up then going to the city trying or learning hairdressing yeah uh, now talk a little bit more about from hairdressing how you actually ended up in Australia yeah um, this part that like I said when when I leave the my hometown I go mm. to the city at mm. that time I do like hairdressing that I learn a little bit in my hometown first mm -hmm. because I think that is the first star for me but when i leave my hometown i go to work for the company that like souvenir thing yeah. for one and a half year in that time and after that i go back with hairdressing because i think hairdressing is easy to balance with life and yeah. do easy for me i can work or whatever mm. i can control that easily so at that point i go back to hairdressing to go to work for someone else at yep. that point amazing thing that I say mm. when I'm lacking confidence when I was 16 after that I go to work for someone else for three years yep. in 19 I opened the first hair salon for myself at 19 19 Wow was so, amazing and if you are older than 19 or even younger than 19 and thinking you know what I should start that business I should start doing this there yeah. you go. At 19, that's your first business, and it's a hair, yeah. hairdressing salon. This yeah. is back in, obviously, Vietnam. Yes, in yep. Vietnam. Yep. And it just, like, like when I opened the first hair salon when I'm 19, but my client, people come in and they couldn't believe that, number one, I can open when I was that young. Number two, with the way I talk, yep. two story I never forget, one that, one man come a haircut we have a talk and he just asked hey can i ask how are you because in my culture ask the a that's just normal yeah. okay how are you i say i'm 19 and he just say oh really i think is you the, the your mature it look like you are 30 years old mm. because i know everything yeah. to talk yeah that's good yeah, yeah. so that you gave him a confidence of a thing confident which means when i'm 16 i don't know how to talk but yeah. 19 i know and talk with the guy say to yeah. me that i'm yeah. like 30 year old one of my friends come in like three years i haven't met and mm -hmm. then she talking to me and she's like oh can you tell me last time i talked to you you don't even know how to say but now did you go to learn conversation class i say no yeah <laughs> that's it yeah. So this is, I learn everything, improve I, every day. And, and I think that's, that, that's also a good point. I mean, you see a lot of people about, you know, come into a course on how to speak and all that kind of stuff, which is great because it teaches you techniques of enhancing it. But I think, you know, like you said, the, the, the key thing that, that I, I can take away from this is, and I always say, is know your stuff. You know, yes. know your stuff, whether it be hobby or career or whatever you're going to talk about. Otherwise, you will actually put yourself down because if people start questioning you, you will lose it. Okay? Yes. So know your stuff is very important. Yes. It's something that you like. Now, so I would love to talk a lot about, you know, your culture, Vietnamese culture and, and food and everything else. But I don't want also to... Uh, for the audiences to miss the momentum. Now, yes, you started your first um, hairdressing saloon at 19. You have a saloon over here. 
you have a business which is called Young's Hair, hair, by, Young. hair by Young. Yes. And you, you don't call it hair hairdressing you call hair transform hair transformation, transformation. Yes. so for the audience out there um, if you're looking um, uh, you're on, on your computer or on your device uh, look up hair by young yeah um, and, and check her out as we're going through this discussion like I said like and share and comment um, and we'll come back to your 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 current business uh, now but take me back take me back to the discussion of when you came to Australia Right, so I actually come to Australia eight years ago, mm -hmm. yes. And um, when I come here that uh, people ask how I come here, so I come with love. My husband, I met my husband in Vietnam in my hair salon, he traveled there, he come to my hair salon have a haircut in Vietnam in Ho Chi Minh. Yeah. So I cut his hair and follow him after that, a year after that, so I come here, but yeah, that is the story how I come so here. So you, uh, you came by love. Yeah, by love, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, yeah. That's, that, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, so 80 years ago you came here, um, and you've got two kids you said? Yes, I once, have. Once yes. three? Yeah, three and uh, seven, uh, six and a half. Yeah, oh wow, yeah. so they, they're, they're still fairly Two boys, yeah. Now, what was you know your couple of your hurdles what were a couple of your uh, when you came into a new country obviously just by yourself i suppose uh, tell yeah. me a little bit about the experience for you know for our clients or our viewers who are you know new to this country or for those who have been here for a long long time and probably would have gone through a similar experience as you tell us a little bit about what you went through yeah so when i come to Australia here, the thing that I have nothing, I say to everyone that if you the same me when you come to Australia, you have no English, you have no skill, you have no helper. I mean in here no helper, in here no friend, no family, except I have my husband. My husband is a big help for me, but I come here with everything I start from scratch. Back to your question, you asked me how, how I can start and, and what. So to me, at that time, I just think even I have been in this tree for over 20 years, like I said, I opened the hair salon it at 19, yeah. but I was success in Vietnam. I do for a lot of famous people. I do TV program. Right. I do, I did like TV program, did like all for famous movie every year, TV every week. Mm -hmm. That is was background. Yep. But when I came here, I have nothing. You didn't and have this, any connections. You didn't, yeah. you didn't know people. Yeah. yeah. This is the point that easy to make people feel doubt for themselves. Because mm. where I, in Vietnam, I hear, but when I come here, I have nothing. Yeah. But I never regret. This is the point. I never regret that I leave Vietnam and I come here. So at that time when I come here, I start everything from cross that would mean I, I still want to continue with hair yep. but my skill in Vietnam that I do hair for a lot of dark Asian hair mm -hmm. but when I live close to the city in Brisbane here don't have much Asian hair for me to right. live to, to work which means I have to learn different skill yep. and what I actually love which is what you say before that you actually have to know what you you like like awareness exactly yeah, yeah yeah you have to go in and not do something just because you have to do it yeah that's right so at that time i just love blonde hair yeah okay i love blonde hair and i start to study with well i'm not good blonde hair. <laughs> with any hair <laughs> yeah yeah so i study with blonde hair look back there i study hairdressing which is blonde hair study english study with consultation to be and at that time what the words you could not believe that i don't even how to spelling english yeah. this is the thing i don't know how to research english yeah. one day i go to research but i start i ask my husband i have to wait for he go home i said hey my love can you tell me how i can research and i use body language i yeah. describe to him and uh I say to him that, oh, I want to do foy, I want to learn foy, but I don't know what the words to say. He say, oh, I describe, and he say, oh, the technique. You know what I did? Mm -hmm. I have to ask him spell that word for me. I put in Vietnamese 
to translate it out and see what the meaning. And I say, oh yes, that's that is what, what I need, yeah. right? Then after that, I put it in, and I don't know how to put a sentence for for research about that. I say, if you are hairdresser, you go to learn how you put in the sentence. He say, okay, what uh, the technique how to do for it. I yeah. write it down. I copy that what he said, and I put in, and I so start to research. Did you that. study English? Did you learn English, or is it mainly from just your eagerness to read and and ask questions from your husband? I suppose. Uh, or when I was in Vietnam, I just learned a little bit. Little I bit. take like nine class, just yep. a little bit, little okay. bit. So I know how to communicate Communic every yeah. day a little bit, but I actually don't know how to write. Right. Yep. Okay. How to put in the sentence yep. to research about English. So communication. That's yep. that's the most important bit. Yep. As long as you can get your message across. Yes. You know that's yep. that's all it matters, right? Yeah. So um, now. Talking about hurdles, obviously, you know, you said there was no one except for your husband. Yeah. And you had to learn all these kind of things. From, you know, we talk about talking with experts, which we talk about, you know, businesses and so on. But in your case, we kind of mix it a bit. As a immigrant coming into Australia, into Brisbane, starting a, you know, own business, obviously you've got the hurdles of the language and so on. What were, if you can identify a few of the you know, lessons that you've learned that you can communicate to our audience out there, what would be the, 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 the business struggles and also obviously the cultural struggles? So, with, in my opinion, with going with the business, I see that a lot of people, let's say in my community hairdressing, yeah. They struggle with, they cannot even run business, they cannot even making money, and they cannot get the right client for their business. Yeah. My point in here that when I start with my career in Australia or wherever, in my mission and vision that yeah. I think, I want to do my business to helping people. The key in here that yeah. helping people is not about I am doing my business business to making money. Yeah. I put into the system that helping people. Yeah. Let's say for example, you come with me, you ask, hey, can I have a haircut? My point of view, I look at your hair, I look at your face, I look at your personal personality, I look at your work yep. and I can see, okay, with this person, with this style, it's good for them. Right. Sometimes you don't even know what you want. But in my situation, I am, say, I, because I opened a business to helping my so client. So you can identify the style and whatever that person will yes. look like. That's interesting. I yes. never, well, I suppose I've never been to a hairdresser for a long time. Yeah. I, I don't know what it's like, but I can, yeah, that's, that's, that's really interesting. Yeah. So, so it's like going to a, um, a professional accountant and say, hey, this is my business. This, this is where I want it to go. Show me how it's done. Show me what it look like. So yeah, that, you do the same with the hair. Right? That is exactly right. So that's why I say to be set for either whatever business in in your field right yeah. just put the right mindset and think that i am doing this to helping people and that's what i start that's, and yeah. then i can because i to, to me that i think i helping people and i always add the value number one number two that always find the solution yeah. This is the key because people they come in they they not just want they buy something yeah. they need so, after that. So wh wh whereabouts is um, your business? Uh, in Windsor. In like, Windsor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In yeah. Windsor. It's so not far from city. It's not Brisbane far city. from city. Yeah. And um, now obviously people do come for getting your hair transformed. Yeah, trend, yeah. Um, now, hairdressers are known to be counselors as well. Uh, tell me, um, I know we kind of touched a little bit about, uh, you know, helping communities and so on. Yeah. But your hair transformation is probably just a surface level of what you do with your clients. So tell, tell me a little bit more about, you know, um, the, the therapy or the, or the mental health support yes. that, 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 you, that you give to your clients. All right. 
Oh my God, talk about it. I can talk for all day, but I give you one example for mm -hmm. this and it make really sense. Like my, to me that when I do for my client, I always that thing, I want to help them feel good inside and outside. One story that my client that she from Gold Coast, mm -hmm. okay, Gold Coast, I'm Brisbane, yep. but she from Gold Coast, she ride to Brisbane to see me and she come and she get her hair done. And then after that, I just go through with her about interview and she said to me like this, uh, uh, when she start to come with me, she, she feel that very, very lacking confidence. She feel that very embarrassing. She from New Zealand, right? right? But she came to Australia for four years. She never come to hairdresser, mm -hmm. number one, because she cannot find that the person can understand what she want try to say yeah. because she tried a lot on Google, yeah. a lot of hair salon around, but no one makes she feel that trust yeah. and believe and they can help her. That number one. Number two, that she embarrassed with her hair. She thought, okay, my hair is too frizzy, it's yeah. too bulky, too not good, yeah. the color is not right. And she kind of like embarrassed go to see hairdresser because mm. she think they will laugh at her or uh, make yep. she feel that was yeah, she the confidence yeah like in not, confidence. Yeah, not confident hair just happens to be the yeah yeah then she go to research on google finally she found me and i test her in the first message and she's like yep you are the right person to help me mm -hmm. then the appointment come in she come over i take over and train her hair out after a week later, I because I have um, uh, the interview of the hair transformation story, and I asked her the question: Could you tell me that three things that make you feel that mm -hmm. different from before and after? She said to me that after she changed her hair, that it just makes she feel so believe in herself, and she said, "Okay." I look pretty, I look so good, I look very, this hairstyle is amazing, it look good on me. Yeah. Three things she said, number one, that wherever she go, people look at her and say, you look amazing. That number one thing very she good. not never can imagine that. Number two, that she said, over a week, but family member keep saying, you look amazing. Mom, you look so good. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that she said to me that really honest about, she said, oh, you know, that I never have the feeling before that I don't want to go out because I want, I don't, people look at my hair, I embarrass. Yeah. After that, I call my daughter, hey daughter, let's go out, I want to show up my hair. My hair look great, look amazing, I love it. And she said, I go out more often that's, after that. That's great. Yeah. That's, that's, you know what, one of the, uh, I think another nugget would be, if you look confident, you feel confident, you will be confident, and sometimes it's those little things, well for me it's little things because I've got little hair, yeah. <laughs> um, but the way you dress, you know, the, the, the way you do your hair or your beard or whatever it may be, uh, your exercise, your physique, uh, gives you those confidence and actually makes you get out of your comfort zone. So um, very important topics. Um, yes. I normally say is even, you know, when I'm doing consulting, um, um, is put away the tools or put away your, 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 your uh, files or laptops, whatever it may be on your desk, because a messy desk is a messy mind, which then leads into messy thoughts, you know, but if you tidy up your area or tidy up yourself, you know, um, you will have that clear uh, and confident, and a, a a new you know a new outlook every every day. Yep. So that's a great way of looking at it. You know, yep. to, you know, just like making a bed. You know, you get up in the morning. You know, you'll have to get back into your bed yes. that night. But we still make up, make our bed because when you go in, you feel clear and yep. it looks great when you make your bed. You know, so. That is a similar kind of mindset. Yeah. Now I know we can talk for hours here, for hour, uh, yeah. uh, Young. <laughs> uh, but uh, for the audiences, um, if you haven't checked um, uh, Young's website or her, uh, you know, social media page, 
It's hairbayang. Yes. And it's hairbayang.com. Dot yeah. com. Uh, yeah. Dot are you now? Just dot com. Yeah. Just dot com. Dot com. Hairbayang is G I I N G with a spelling. Yeah. Very yeah. good. Yeah. We kind of clarified that earlier yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, G is a bit silent. Um, or you know you can you can comment down the bottom and we'll give you the information as well. But yeah. um, please help and support. Um, obviously, any any businesses out there it doesn't cost you anything. Like and share. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Um, now we will probably try and get you once again uh, down the track, and um, we'll focus more on the expert side of it because we've never had a hairdresser come in as a you know, talking with expert. But some of the things I suppose we just touched on. Uh, um, is the mental health side of it giving people confidence yep. and and through hair obviously yep uh, now if you are out there looking for businesses and I often say people can find any lawyers accountants any hairdressers but it's how you connect with the person yeah that's, that's important and your yep. story of your client uh, yeah down from Gold Coast um, is a great example of yeah you know, yeah, she could have found any hairdresser, bigger, better, expensive, cheaper, doesn't matter. But yeah. she needed to connect with you. That's right. That's okay. right. So, so getting to the point that I say that it's mm. very important that if you put your mind, your passion, and your thought to do with mm. say, okay, I'm doing it to help my client, yep. and then when you do it, actually the client feel it no matter where you are they yeah. still find you like to me my client is everywhere melbourne sydney go court shansai court they fly to next to my um my studio yeah. stay in the hotel next there yeah. get hair done and go back tomorrow wow that's that amazing. is just yeah that's and amazing. also i am helping with hairdresser that the hair salon owner or freelance mm. hairdresser that how to turn your passion into money and yeah. also make do what you love especially that i teach that balayage from dark go to blonde in one visiting yeah. Yeah. and this is a lot of people cannot do it and yeah. most of 95 percent hairdressers say you cannot do balayage from dark go to blonde in one sitting yeah. i say don't worry i turn from impossible to possible yeah is amazing so that is most of my client that from go from dark go to blonde yeah. in one visiting wow. yeah excellent well thank you very much yeah um, like i said um you know you had some great pointers there and some of those that i mentioned as well but if you want to get more information about what uh, you know young does uh, please get in touch with us or get in touch with directly with uh, with Young, uh, appreciate your time. And like I said, this episode was community influencers. Obviously, you're from Vietnam, so hopefully the Vietnamese community would be, would be inspired, and not only the Vietnam uh, Vietnamese community, but the the ladies out there in any uh, ethnic any, or uh, any community, yep. uh, Australian, whether you know. Yep. Uh, anyone uh, listening obviously though yours your handles are most of the people's handles and challenges and so if young can do that so can you uh, thank you very much please like and share and we'll see you next time for our next episode of community influences thank you young. thank you so much Bob <laughs> thank you for having me again <laughs>